Arlington, Texas, Devontae Adams wore a backpack as he stood against a locker room wall, and looked like he had just finished a leisurely walk to the neighborhood bookstore. Other than a scratch above his left eye, the Green Bay Packers receiver revealed no hint of the occupational hazards he is paid to navigate on a weekly basis. He had just beaten the Dallas Cowboys with his second touchdown catch, this one in the back of the end zone in the final seconds, and Adams was giving reporters a clear eyed account of the process. Aaron Rodgers had thrown him the same pass on the previous play, a pass that fell incomplete, and the receiver returned to the huddle and told the quarterback to run it again. And he gave me that look. Adams said. Rogers threw this ball a little higher on the next play, and Adams turned to track it a little earlier, and suddenly the Packers had all but replicated their dramatic divisional playoff victory nine months ago in the same Super Bowl of a ballpark, AT&T Stadium. Adams fired the ball into the crowd to punctuate the moment. It was a 34-31 Packers win in January, and a 35-31 Packers win on Sunday and everybody on the visitor's side went home happy. That's what we do, Rogers barked as he entered the locker room. That's what we do, baby. Rogers immediately passed a sign on his left that was headlined, Concussion, in bold, capital letters, with this warning beneath it, a must read for NFL players. Let's take brain injuries out of play. That sign perfectly explained why the hero of the game, Adams, didn't belong on the field in the first place. Adams passed the same sign moments after Rogers did. It defined a concussion as a brain injury that alters the way your brain functions. On the list of reasons why players should report symptoms, two in particular stood out. Your brain is the most vital organ in your body, read one. Unlike other injuries, there may be significant consequences to playing through a concussion. Read the other. Adams had suffered a concussion on a brutal hit to the head by Bears linebacker Danny Trevathan during their Week 4 matchup, and there the receiver was 10 days later, throwing himself back into the violent fray. Adams suffered a concussion last year on another hit to the head by Cowboys linebacker Sean Lee, and played four nights later against the Bears. 4. Not only did Adams play against Chicago last October, he scored two touchdowns, and had career highs with 13 receptions and 132 yards. In both cases, the team doctors and independent neurologists who cleared Adams appeared to be vindicated by the receiver's performance on the field. Well, Adams said Sunday through a smile, just something about those concussions, I guess. I don't know. God allowed me to come out here, and play to the best of my abilities. Obviously it was a great win for us and I'm just happy I came out healthy. On many levels, Adams is a credit to his profession and to the test of will and manhood that has been the historic Packers-Cowboys rivalry. Vince Lombardi would have loved Adams. Tom Landry, too. Back in their day, long before anyone ever heard of the brain disease known as CTE, real men played through severe headaches, dizziness, and nausea caused by head shots. Under those old-school terms of engagement, you didn't get a concussion. You merely got your bell rung. But that was then, and this is most definitely now. Research released in July on 202 former football players revealed evidence of a brain disease linked to repeated head blows in nearly all of them. Many donors or their families contributed because of the players' repeated concussions and troubling symptoms before they died. These players include men who were barely functional in their final years. Men who were broken physically and emotionally. Men who committed suicide. So, a player who suffers a brain injury should never be allowed to participate in his next scheduled game, or two. All the guardians of professional football, from owners to league commissioner Roger Goodell to team executives and head coaches, talk and talk about wanting to make the sport safer in the age of CTE, and yet nobody stopped Adams from suiting up and signing up for another three hours of collisions. Go back and replay the Trevathan shot to Adam's head. The helmet-to-helmet -helmet impact is devastating, sending the receiver's mouthpiece flying. Almost as soon as Adams hit the ground, players on both teams started frantically waving for medical personnel to race to his aid. He was taken off on a gurney, and the frightening images strongly suggested we wouldn't be seeing him back in uniform for a while. Trevathan was suspended for Monday night's matchup with Minnesota. The player who caused the brain injury would miss a game, 
but the player who suffered the brain injury would not. Adams said he was cleared to play Friday afternoon after going through the league's concussion protocol. He said he recalled everything Abu.